I'm waiting for the minute to tick by. Okay. It just buzzed you, so you can go back. Yeah, maybe it was. You are hereby notified that the board of meet regular board of education school year number forty at six p.m. on Monday, October twenty third, twenty twenty three, at the College Professional Development Room, the Avenue of Cities, Moline. All right. Can opening of the meeting? Can I get a roll call, please? Audrey Adamson here. Chet DeSmith here. Ramona Dixon. Jason Farrell here. Lindsey Hines here. Andrew Weyer. Aaron Waldron Smith. I am here. Justin Kalarapu. All right, we're skipping number two because I'm here. <laughs> it's supposed to be gone. All right, let's all rise for the Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Number four is the approval of minutes. A is the minutes of the open session of the regular Board of Education meeting of October 9th, 2023. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. B is the minutes of the closed session of the regular Board of Education meeting on October 9th, 2023. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mrs. Sanders, I am excited today to introduce to you um, some of our very special staff and students uh, uh, at uh, Moline High School and in our middle schools and our elementary. Um, we are going to have a brief presentation about our Special Olympics um, uh, groups that includes uh, elementary students, middle school students, and high school students. They are going to tell you all about that and, and some of the events that our group has been doing. So I'm going to introduce to you uh, Geraldine Clark. Geraldine is one of our special education teachers at Roosevelt. I'm going to introduce to you Erica Waterman. Uh, she is our, uh, one of our adaptive PE teachers in the district. Um, I have, we have Sarah Whipple today. She's one of our paraeducators at Wilson. Tara, uh, sorry, at, she is at Roosevelt. Tara Wilson is one of our parent mentors um, at Roosevelt, and then Sherry Lyman, one of our paraeducators and also one of our coaches at, um, at Moline High School. So if you guys were paying attention to the contract that you just uh, passed uh, in October, there was a lot of movement and, uh, and uh, quite a bit more that was done for this special crowd. So I will let you guys go ahead and go to it. All right. Um, first, we wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about Special Olympics. Um, what Special Olympics is, um, it's a global organization that changes lives by promoting and understanding uh, and acceptance and inclusion of all people with all sorts of disabilities. So um, who can participate in Special Olympics? Um, this is why we've started it at such a young age, because kids can start at eight and they can participate after they graduate high school. So this is something that they can do lifelong. So they can participate in these Special Olympics. So we're just getting them started in something that they can continue doing their whole life. What our Special Olympics year looks like, um, the first um, sport that we have is bowling. We start uh, practices as soon as school starts. So. Um, usually we have to have some practices in May so that we can get some scores because we have to turn in all our paperwork at the beginning of August before school starts. Um, and then the competitions continue through September and October. So the next one is basketball and we start practices. I know the high school has been practicing for a couple weeks now and we're going to start our practices at the beginning of November. Um, and these games continue through December, February, depending on if they make it to state, then they go through March. Then we have track in May. Some of the things that we're looking at adding um, is snowshoeing and skiing. It says possibly in 2023, unfortunately, maybe 2024. <laughs> we just keep on adding more things. They did um, 
at the high school. They started doing practices for flag football, but they have not competed in flag football. And also the unified bocce. Um, Mrs. Lyman is going to talk about those a little bit later. So here's the like mini maroons and the junior maroons. Um, what have we been up to in the last year? So spring of 2022, we started the mini maroons with five athletes um, at Roosevelt. In 2023, we added the junior maroons. Um, so now we are the only district in the region that offers Special Olympics starting at age eight and going through graduation. So we were just talking about how at our coaches meeting for the whole region, which includes Geneseo, Galesburg, UT, Rock Island, that they're really using us as a model to get those other districts to get more inclusive with Special Olympics. Um, so we started, if you can see that picture on the right with the all of our athletes, there's four we started um, in 2022. And now we have uh, 25 athletes for both the middle school and the elementary. So it's growing really, really fast. Hi, so just like um, Mrs. Sanders had mentioned in the new contract, um, we have paid coaches at every level. So Sherilyn Clark is the mini Maroons head coach, Sarah Whipple is the assistant coach for the mini maroons myself for the junior maroons so that covers um john deere and wilson and tara wilson is the assistant coach um like she mentioned the numbers are growing um, we just had that parent meeting the black box was full of families um, that's where we also had the regional f director come and she was able to talk to um, about the logistics of meeting the med app and the consent forms um, for the students. Um, and now that it is separated, so Gerilyn, in previous years, she would have the junior maroons and the mini maroons together um, doing practices. Now we're all separated. Um, so I've been working with the um, athletic directors at the junior highs to get gym space so we can start our practices. And that, that's the practice with November 7th. Um, opportunities for um, and then we have more opportunities for more sports. Um, the only bad thing is, is as years go on, some sports are getting added, some sports are having to get cut. Um, so we just kind of got to see what sports are available. Um, so here is just pictures from bowling. So the two on each side is from previous years. And this one down here is just um, our regionals. Um, we have, so the individuals that place bold in regionals are going to be um, being able to compete at sectionals on November 4th. Fifth. Fifth. Sunday. Fifth. Sorry, the fourth is our fall class. <laughs> and Sunday. that's the whole team in the middle. Yep. So that's all. Um, Minis, juniors. The, uh, yep, the high school, the middle school. So it was neat to have them all together. So then those students that did advance on November, or on, if they get gold again on November 5th, then they will advance to states. So here is some of the skills competitions. So um, the high school, we have a fall classic on November 4th. They actually do um, games. Our minis and juniors, they do skills competition. And that will be in Dixon again. Um, where we do our spot shots, um, dribbling, uh, distance, and then target shooting are the three skills for the basketball skills. Um, and track and field, this is from the previous, and that's the same one? Yes. Okay. And we also have where our bike can be here. And Shannon is going to talk about unified. So we have unified at the high school. <laughs> I'm hoping to expand that in the junior high here next year. Okay, and <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, Unified is where we pair um, a gen ed student alongside um, a, a, one of the Special Olympics athletes, and they actually compete together um, in different sports. So on November 5th, we have, oh, I think four, four or five Unified um, partner teams. Is that on the next slide? Mm -hmm. 
be on the next slide. Yes. Oh, there we go. We have five unified. Yeah, you know, I, I was close. Uh, we have five unified partners competing um, at sectionals on November 5th. And uh, they, we just got done having practice today with, with the partners and, and some, of the, some of the younger ones too. So it, uh, it's great. Um, the, the, our gen ed kids who are participating in this program are full on just embracing every bit of it. Um, it's, it's great to see the relationships that are being built between, between the gen ed students alongside, uh, alongside our special needs athletes. So, uh, we did start flag football um, practices and that's, that's going well. Um, it's, it's, it's been fun because our Special Olympics athletes are better than our unified partners, so they think that's pretty <laughs> hilarious. Um, and then we're going to be doing bocce um, uh, competition then this spring. So, um, yeah, you can do that. That's okay, so I kind of mentioned about the parent meeting we had on the 16th where we had about 20, 25 families attend. Like I mentioned, the room was packed. Lots of questions were answered. Um, the regional director was there, so she was able to um, answer any of the questions we might not have been able to answer. Um, and we also have a med app day um, coming up at Roosevelt. So that is where the school health link is going to come and be able to administer um, physicals for students that might not be able to do outside of the district. So then um, that is paid for through Special Olympics, too. Um, so that again is November 16th and I know we're providing transportation also for the any students outside of the Roosevelt able to come that day. Coming events, kind of talked about on the November 4th we have the annual fall classic. Um, that's where we have the basketball tournament. There's three games, four teams. So we have our team, Mullen High School. Rock Island, uh, United Township, and then Galesburg, the is the Knox Thunder. Sure, do you want to talk a little bit about it? Because yeah. um, I know it's me. Oh, no, 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 you're you're okay. Uh, um, we have we have done um, a, a version of this. Um, Years ago, it used to be March Madness. We used to do it in March, and then we moved it to the Fall Classic last year. So this is our second year of doing it um, in the fall, and uh, we. In order to compete in the regional competition, you have to have at least three um, co uh, competitive games played and our scores turned in. So we were like, why wouldn't we host a, an event? So uh, we started that last year. And so that not only provides us with the ability to get our games in that we need to get, um, but it also helps out Rock Island, United Township, um, Galesburg, because we all have to um, all have to have those games. So. Um, I, this one is coming up on November 4th. Um, it's going to be in the, the uh, PE uh, center over at the high school. Uh, we will have raffle. Um, they're not baskets this year. We're doing uh, like raffle gift card baskets. So they're not going to be big baskets. It's just going to be several different uh, gift cards. Um, and we'll be, you know, that, that money then uh, that we raise goes to offset our costs for um, our travel costs or our entry fees into um, some of the Special Olympics competitions. Um, that would be if we would play in any other like districts. We don't charge to have um, the other teams come to us because we, we feel like it's a, a goodwill offering um, to everybody. But there have been years in the past where we have gone and competed and you have your entry fees and stuff like that. So. Um, it helps pay for our food and stuff when we travel. So just those little travel expenses, plus our uniforms, and uh, we're hoping to get the kids some all the same tennis shoes this year. So hmm. we don't want them uh, playing in Hey Dudes. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of uh, that, been one of those. All right, guys, we got to get real tennis shoes uh, on the on the court. So um, there will be a bake sale that is going to be for the mini Marins and junior Marins. We had it last year and we raised six hundred dollars for a bake sale. That's, oh, pretty, good. that's so. pretty good for a big sale. So. And then for the high school portion, we do. Uh, we also just do a free will donation. We don't. We don't charge admission into the game. It's just whatever anybody would would like to to donate to us. So um, that's how we usually try to raise our money, and and it's worked out really well. And then um, we don't have a scheduled date, but I am sure Moline's uh, high school's basketball team will play Rocky again 
uh, their their team at halftime of a morning Rocky game if we can get that coordinated with Todd Thompson. But um, we we've had a lot of success. I don't know if you guys have been there for it. Yes. But it's it's uh, great. It's a pretty amazing event. So we are very fortunate to be able to uh, bring our kids along for that that experience. So so all right. Mm -hmm. The fall classic is a lot of fun. So the fall can, classic is a lot of fun. So, come, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's really it's, neat to see everybody it's get involved. Fun to see uh, see see these these kids compete because they are very they're, competitive. They are they're it's, it's they're fun to watch. So anyway, all right. You have, all right. Yeah. And then the last slide too. We uh, um, did you have spirit wear last year? Is this oh. new? Yeah. Spirit wear. Um, no, we had spirit wear, but we're gonna be okay. doing. Because this year we're going to have an online store, and um, our shirts are going to kind of uh, encompass all of them together. So we nice. have a new, new logo, logo that incorporates all of our teams. Okay, so community impact. Um, a word from parents and athletes. <laughs> Data. Data. Did you? <laughs> Data, my youngest daughter. She's <laughs> She is our special Olympics athlete. Um, she has been involved. I don't think like since we started. Yeah. Since we started, yeah. Yeah. Um, so since we started the elementary. Been involved in the little while about it. Um, um, she's a junior now, now, but she started as a mini at middle school, seventh grade, right now. She likes all sports, so she enjoys, she seems to enjoy everything um, that she's put in, as long as it doesn't like come off the line or just be screwed up. Like there's, if, if it's, um, if we put, if we put her into something where there's like the um, line or something like that, that would not be fun. Like a hockey game. Seems to enjoy everything, but I think her right now she just enjoys it, and she likes her medals, and she feels very proud of herself at the end. So that's that's the most important thing for us mm -hmm. is that she feels proud of her achievements. So. Um, that's the thing about special Olympics. Um, I, I think obviously the joy that she gets out of it, the joy that we get out of watching her. Um, it's also the sense of community and um, belonging. She is able to be with other people who are more like her, um, that have the same abilities or um, yeah, so she doesn't have Thank you. Yeah. Yep. That is the end of our questions. Questions. I just a question. So the because we don't have any other mini or junior as much nearby here, have, was it a lot more travel? I guess for that, and it's the hope that some of these other schools will then start doing it, so that way it's the right. Um, so we still get to the the bowling is here locally. So our bowling competition. Um, is with the older kids. Okay. They aren't necessarily playing against them or yeah. bowling against them. Um, but as far as the individual skills, we do have to travel to Dixon. So mm -hmm. if Rock Island and UT, then we could maybe have something, you know, here at Moline mm -hmm. or at UT so that we wouldn't have to travel so far. Okay. So just to get, you know, more kids. And I think it really helps with the families too because they get to meet each other in the whole yeah. community. Um, and help each other out. So I know that the parents really enjoy that too, getting to getting to see kids from other districts, not just home markets too. Absolutely. Thank you so much yeah. for sharing. Sure we might have enough to be able to do like a basketball okay. um, game. So like maybe like next year we could start getting them in at the one that the high school does. So for the for the gen ed students that are paired up with the athletes, do they change for each sport or do they have the same kind of buddy throughout? 
Um, we, we switch it up sometimes. Um, so yeah, we've had, um, last year we had um, a unified uh, partners that, that went on to state last year. Um, both those athletes are, are on the, um, the team again this year. Jaden actually placed gold, so he's going to be competing in the singles. So Lynn Marie, the, the unified partner, is actually going to be teaming up then with one of our other students who did not uh, place gold. So um, they shift around. They have a great time. They all rotate who, who they do stuff with. Um, one of the really special things um, that came out of this, we just had homecoming, and two of the unified partners took two of our Special Olympic athletes to the homecoming dance and they went to dinner and did all the things. So, um, yeah, super so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing to see, to see both worlds, you know, come together and, and, and the acceptance is just so great. So we're very pleased with that. Is there a social media site for the Moline teams that we can use to share this information? We have something? Facebook pages. Okay. Yep. Well, there's a Moline High School Special Olympics Facebook page. And then Moline Mini and Junior Maroons. And Junior. Yep, that and just junior. got okay. created a few weeks ago. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Yeah. That's why we post a lot of, the, of our upcoming yeah. events and things and like that on there. So. Candace to see if she can post when we have like any bigger things going on. November 4th. November 4th. 9 a.m. Yeah. Thank you very much. Is there any public comment or participation from the No. Okay. Before we do the public hearing, is there any kind of special wording or anything for that? Or would you like me to wing it? <laughs> okay. Uh, um, go ahead and wing it because uh, we don't have the ring. Right. Be prepared to be shocked by this. <laughs> okay. Um, do I need separate motions for each A, B, or C, Kristen? Yes. Okay. Number seven is the public hearing for e-learning in lieu of emergency days verification. A is the opening of the public hearing. As for any, if we have any for or yes. against, and then if none, then we close that one and then we move on to the next one. And then is there anybody for? Anybody against? Moving on. <laughs> All right. I'm going to assume that there's no public comment for or against. I did not receive any. Okay. And then I'm going to close the public hearing. Is anyone for that or against that? Fantastic. Sorry about that. That's all right. I feel as though that was an Oscar winning performance. I think it, <laughs> I think it was. All right. Bravo. Moving on to the consent agenda as amended, which is an um, L, a facility usage request recommended for the approval subject to compliance with the Board of Education. It should say Monday through Friday instead of Monday through Saturday. Could I get a L? Yes, L number one. It should say Monday through Friday instead of Monday through Saturday. Get a motion, please. So moved. Any discussion? All right. Hearing none. Could I have a roll call? Jason Farrell. Aye. Lindsey Hines. Aye. Aaron Waldron Smith. Aye. Audrey Adamson. Aye. Chetha Smith. Aye. Ramona Dixon. Aye. Andrew Weir. All right. Number nine is the approval of e-learning in lieu of emergency days verification. Recommended motion is that the Board of Education approve an e-learning program verification form and adopt the district's e-learning plan for the term of three years. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, could I have a roll call, please? Lindsay Hines. Aye. Aaron Waldron Smith. Aye. Audrey Adamson. Aye. Chetha Smith. Aye. Ramona Dixon. Aye. Jason Farrell. Aye. Andrew Weir. All right, number 10. The approval of revised non-union hourly rates for the 2023-2024 school year. The recommended motion is that the Board of Education approve the increase to $20 per hour for the following positions. Announcers, clock operators, scorekeeper, security, parking pass slash gate, 
and ticket takers. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, could I have a roll call, please? Karen Waldron Smith. Aye. Audrey Adamson. Abstain. Chet the Smith. Aye. Ramona Dixon. Aye. Jason Farrell. Aye. Lindsay Hines. Aye. All right, that's reports, requests, and open discussion. Dr. Savage? Um, I'd like to defer to Jeffin first. He's got uh, some news to share or some updates on his projects. Um, I was not prepared for this. <laughs> so um, I'm the president of History Club, and one of the biggest projects we're doing for a while, like, probably a couple of years history, um, is we're redoing the senior patio at the school. Oh. So the senior patio, I don't, I don't know if you guys have been out there in a while, but um, it's kind of been worn down. Uh, the grass has grown out. Um, the pond had algae full in it. So it's been a mess for a couple of years, but we went out there and we've been working on it. So we redid the pond, um, got all the algae out, uh, fixed the piping, and hopefully in the spring we can get fish in there. So cause since it's getting cold again, um, we're waiting for the spring. Um, and we kind of want to do a sort of outdoor classroom vibe to it. So we put in 16 kind of different signs and posts uh, on the outside of the patio. And we're gonna have kind of an exhibit, an outdoor exhibit there. And then um, later in the spring, we have an idea of actually creating a kind of outdoor classroom so that classes, if they are, and uh, like on a good day, wanna go out there and kind of learn in that outdoor environment, we'll have whiteboards and we'll have different kind of um, places for people to sit. Um, so that's a big project. We're trying to still get funding, but smaller things we fixed. We remulched a lot of the kind of um, area. Uh, we're hoping that we can get natural grass in the natural grass and like natural wildflowers in the surrounding area just to get it um, to look nicer. We're hoping to get different clubs involved. Obviously, there's a very big mental benefit to learning outside in nature. So gray matters. Uh, we're looking to work with them. Our club, they're repainting some of um, Right now they're going to repaint the M because we resealed all of the um, patio floor. We resealed it a couple weeks back. So yeah, we've just been working on it. Um, it's a big project, but we as a senior, I know that uh, the senior patio hasn't been utilized much. So we're hopefully going to make it better. And it's a big part of our school. So we just want to make it better for years to come. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Nice job. That's awesome. I think you were very prepared. <laughs> um, uh, thank you for that. Just a lot of great events happening uh, this week, especially as we round out first quarter. Um, this Thursday is the first combined choir and instrumental uh, concert at Moline High School um, at uh, 6.30 p.m., I believe, on Thursday. Um, we've got another fantastic Read Moline event also coming up on Thursday, the Treats and Reads. And I want to give another shout out to the curriculum department who um, have just done a great job putting these events together that have been so positive and so well received by families. So this one, um, I believe, is in the parking lot of Steel Plow and will be a great opportunity for kids to wear their costumes and to engage our community partners, as well as for kids to get some new books. And of course, um, this is also aligned to our pay school under C4 community. So um, anything else that you guys would like to add for that? Steel plow in Hawaii, uh, they're gonna have ice cream and lots of candy and we've got a great <laughs> selection of scholastic books and uh, a lot of just different titles. We've got some different languages as well to represent all of our families. So we're excited about it. So if it does rain, we'll have, we'll probably be um, uh, inside either the way, we'll, we'll adjust, but there is a call for, there is a chance of rain, so we'll let the community know what we're doing when we have an activity. Very good, thank you. <clears throat> um, uh, we also on Wednesday evening have the Illinois School Board Association Blackhawk Division event in Kiwani, and I believe we've got Audrey and Jason um, and myself registered to go, so that'll be a great opportunity to network with other boards, and they usually have a nice um, informative pre uh, presentation for the participants as well. Um, we also got great news on the chiller for Lincoln Irving. It is on its way officially, um, and Keith informed us today that he's scheduling the crane for installation uh, for this coming Saturday. 
Uh, so that is really fantastic to have these projects wrapping near completion so we can begin focusing on many of our other needs that we're very anxious to get to, but we're very excited to get these um, HVAC uh, projects completed. Um, and this afternoon, <clears throat> Dr. Pribble and I attended a United for Schools event at Washington Elementary, and it was such a fantastic sort of convening of so many community partners from John Deere to United Way, the Moline Public School Foundation, uh, Girls on Fire, uh, uh, Junior Achievement, so many different entities coming together, wrapping around this United for Schools concept that um, uh, they have put forth in adopting Washington. So it has just been a great event to see all of the different community partners come together. And the goal is to replicate this model to different schools throughout our throughout the Quad City region. So it's just another great example of our community partners working together to support our schools. And uh, we're just excited to see all the things to come for Washington as they continue to grow and improve. Um, and lastly, just as I mentioned before, next Friday is the end of first quarter. It has come so fast. And of course, parent teacher conferences are uh, moving ahead uh, the week following. So lots of updates to come, including our map growth and our um, report card uh, information coming out um, in early November. So we've got a lot uh, that we're looking forward to. Uh, did I miss the time for the treat and read? Uh, four, I have it here. Treats and reads. 4.30 to 6.30? 5 to 6.30. Oh, sorry. 5 to 6.30. I should have I had the flyer up just a minute ago. Any open? Yes. 4.30. Well, 4.30 to 6. 4.30 to 6. 4.30 to 6. Yes. Thank you. And they're wrong. Where is it? We stand correct. Sorry. I just want to reshare that out. Give a shout out to the curriculum department. Um, as you know, being a librarian, Read Moline and very passionate about it. And thank you for all the hard work that you've done to keep it going. It's I think it's an awesome community outreach and getting our kids ready to read when they walk in the door. Um, and getting access to books, which is not always the case for some of our families. Thank you very much. Any other open discussion? Yeah, uh, I mean, it feels like it's so far behind, but it really wasn't since our last meeting. But a great turnout for the homecoming parade given the weather. Right. Just to see all those people out there still was awesome. It was um, awesome. The game was a lot of fun and a big win. So um and then you know, thanks to my team of three here they were able yeah. to walk and clear the elements and, and you know what the rain stuck up stayed away for just long enough. Just yeah, long that long window was in. perfect because when we were walking back it started to crack down. I don't think you guys ran out of candy. No, we paced it good. I'm, we, I'm, many I think years in now, I think. The last, handful, the last the handful was at 27th Street. Yep, so yep. It's that's good. That's great. <laughs> Those kids were really wanting candy, though, like mm -hmm. more than even well, other years. Some, they were just, some of the sad. parents was, were really wanting candy, uh, too. <laughs> and then just a shameless plug for this Friday. Uh, there's a couple of us. I think three. Are you cooking? Are you doing a chili? Chili, too? yeah. Oh, so yeah. Three of us chili, are doing chili. Anybody else That's doing right. for Moline Music Friday? Um, so come on out and support Moline Music and have some chili. Mine will be spicy, but I believe the other two are not spicy. Mine is not spicy because I'm a so. weenie. Same. Mine is the furthest away from spicy. Yeah, I'm delicious. I am mild all the way. I was warned by my wife over the weekend because I tried to make something with some spice, and she said, You're going to hurt someone. So I'm going to taper it <laughs> okay. a little bit, but it still will be spicy. Yeah. So. Mine is family friendly. <laughs> family friendly chili. Here. Family yes. friendly chili. All right. Anything else? All right. Um, well, just a reminder because I'll forget, and it's down the street from my house, uh, that our next meeting is at Franklin. Yes. Thank you. And I will drive past Franklin. <laughs> Come here and turn around. Right. <laughs> well, Chet, you're doing better than me. I was at Franklin tonight. Oh, oh. oh no. <laughs> Just missing home. I, I just wanted to go see Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry that got me all off. Um, anything else before we move on? Okay. And I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.